on the bike ride this morning, uh, I was thinking about a question I was asked uh, yesterday. I was giving a presentation to one of our customers at a large auto group, and uh, they were having an internal conference about DevSecOps. <laughs> and someone asked me, like, what the difference, if I was to explain DevOps versus DevSecOps to a child, how would I explain it? And of course, I didn't do that. I went into a lengthy little position piece. I mean, I guess if I were to explain it to a child, I would say DevOps is I'm using some frozen fish sticks that come pre-made and I heat up to give to you on a plate. But then DevSecOps is if I give it to you on a plate, I nail the plate down so you can't take the plate and throw all your food off at once. So that's your uh, explain it to a child sort of thing. So here's what I want to do. I want to go over uh, kind of a, a behind the scenes of like working on a tiny little 60 second video about what DevSecOps is. And to give you a preview, I think the premise that I would have here is that, uh, is that one, what we're talking about with this is actually trying to go back. If you look at your entire uh, chain of, you know, creating software and de deploying it and running it, it's just, and this effort has existed forever in DevOps, but it's the, the idea of going back and adding in controls let me call it that the ability to uh, enforce security and follow best practices in all aspects of the software process possible in the same way that we do that for uh, the operations things that we have with DevOps. And I think another aspect of it, <clears throat> just like in DevOps, we have this idea that operations people are more building a platform, building a tool chain. They're building tools uh, for developers to use to build and run their software. And that's how quality is brought in, right? The, Operations people realize that their job starts uh, when the idea of a soft software starts and app starts and, you know, uh, getting involved in the building and everything rather than just like, I just run the thing, uh, which is what they all sound like, operations people. Um, so it's a similar thing with security. Security people now have responsibility uh, all throughout and, and the exciting opportunity to work all throughout the chain there. Uh, and so... What, what, this is the part that I need to develop better is um, just like with the original DevOps, uh, there was a, uh, uh, there's been a fair amount of technology changes and advances, if you will, that make it possible to do that, right? Like it's not just a, a theoretic idea. It's something that's actually possible with different types of technology that we have. So that's what I'm going to work on. And what I want to do, like I said, this is going to be a little behind the scenes stuff. You can see how the stuff is made. As always, the premise here of Tanzu Talk, the streaming part, is that uh, I don't do any programming or uh, things like that. But what you do in a stream is you have a long stream where you hang out with some nice music in the background and you see someone figure something out. You join them along. So uh, it is, uh, you know, essentially the the behind the scenes look at it. So let's let's start all the way from the beginning. I've got a new way of sharing my iPad here, which I, I'm pretty excited about. So first of all, uh, we're gonna call this, let's see. I don't actually know how to spell baloney. Now I would like to use a word more artful and uh, direct than baloney that starts with a B, but I, I'll try to keep it corporate friendly. So let's say, let's call it is dev sec ops baloney that's going to be our uh, our topic today in the notebook there we go now i've got a fun new picture that i think we'll start with i was making some of these yesterday uh when I was doing some stuff with my colleagues. So let's add this in. There we go. I'll have my daughter, my youngest daughter, she can join us. So, the premise that I'm gonna have, and I'm gonna, let's see, like I said, this is a behind the scenes. I actually did a recording of this on the bike ride on the way in. And, uh, and, and I thought I should refine this. So, uh, it's basically like, you know, dev, what's the ops, the second dev sec ops. 
and then see original DevOps used new tech to improve really to improve we used to call it config and release management that was a tremendous amount you know which which also led to led to better let's call it availability and then eventually led to all that culture stuff now so this is like your first little thing here and then two security move this down here security has always been there now this is where uh it'd be cool to have like a visual of what was his name james wicket giving a talk at DevOps Austin. That would be pretty fun, huh? Let's see if, let's see, James Wicket, DevOps Days, Austin. Ah, why is this being all funky? Let me fix this display for you. Like I said, I've got the, the new software. So we're using that. Why is it cutting that? No one wants that. Oh, that's funny. Wow. So I'm going to have to uh, work on getting the old software here working a little better. Well, anyways, I think I kind of see what, what it's doing, but it's kind of dumb. So let's see, James. You can't really see what's happening here. Wicket. DevOps. Oh. Let's see if that actually brings anything up. See this guy. Not. Not this guy. That's another guy. But he used to, and I'm sure there's many other people too, but you know, because I'm from Austin. He used to, he still does talk a lot about uh, security. You got the OWASP. I should find like a really old, uh, let's see, when would this have been? Like, let's say 2010? Was DevOps Days Austin around back then? Probably. There's November 2016. Not old enough. Rugged DevOps. Yes. Okay. Well, that's good enough research. Let's come back to here and let me, let me fix my iPad chair again. We'll see. So I'm using this thing called a uh, air server that lets you use airplay. And then you can, uh, you can use kind of the presentation stuff a little better. I don't know. Is it better? Good question. So, uh, or we used to call it rugged DevOps. The thing, it is a little slower than I'd like it to be, even though it says it's at 27.3 FPS. Beats me. So it's always been there. But now we have new tech to make it easier. Like with the automation stuff. From number one. Now, what is this new tech? Well, one, 
container based apps. So this gives you uh, what we call the three R's. This is the old term we use, but you know, as an example here, let me, let me make that more of a, as an EG. I always forget what these three R's are, but like it gives you the three R's of definitely repaving, rotating. See, I always forget this stuff. I'm going to go look it up. Uh, what? Because I don't think the three R's is really the best way of putting it nowadays. Rotate, repave, and... And... And repair. Yeah, you know... Let's see if we can go with that. Container-based apps... And passes. In fact, why don't we say... So the reason this is, let me take this. Ah, cutting and pasting in here is always, I've been thinking about, I should just use the Apple notes thing. There's a, uh, what is it doing? No, don't move her. Oh, I know what it's doing. Here, let's take this, move her a little bit down here so it doesn't highlight her. Don't worry, we'll get her back. There's a new uh, iPad OS version coming out, and I think it will finally be, I'm hoping the notes thing will be good, because what's, what's really lacking in notes that makes it a, a, a barrier for me is you can't, uh, you can't like put links you can put links in the desktop version, but you can't put links in on uh, on your phone and stuff, which is and your iPad, which is kind of a bummer. So we'll see if you can actually add that. So if you have container-based apps, what this means is like, fa um, where'd that go? Faster to um, what is it? Faster to rebuild and deploy and then if you add in a paz or kate as i covered in an episode a while ago uh let me read through that what what that means is that then you can actually uh have controls that allow you to then put in place things like the three R's concept. Oh no, it's moving her again. I'll put her right there. Okay. So what this also means, so you have, uh, and then let me see how I'll divide this up because I think, so this is the progression you have here. Then you can do this. No, okay, okay, then I can say you can even have things like build packs and Knative, that kind of stuff, where uh, developers don't even build containers. No OS touching. And then like limit dev mistakes. And then you also just have like, you know, the fancy term secure software supply chain. And all that really means is uh, putting security checks in CI, CD, <laughs> all. But I think these are like kind of the state of where we are at the moment. Now, maybe there's like operational stuff that you get, but I think a lot of what the discussion is at the moment is, is around this thing. 
And then let's do some more concepts just to empty my head. So there's this idea of shift left. And this is what I want to get like a visual for. So, you know, there's like, there's idea. Let's use, I think, I think there's a little light bulb in here. You know, they got these, uh, these delightful little clip art things. I was trying to find some delightful clip art uh, to use. Arguably big waste of time. But, but I'm going to do it. So let's, uh, we need a little, let's get like, like, oh yeah, that's good. So we have an idea. And then what happens, we'll do the very abbreviated, you know, specify features. Code. Test. Package. Deploy. There's actually build. Hmm. Yeah. See, this is why you need a, uh, a, uh, a diagram here. In fact, this is the inner loop. People like to call this the inner loop, which is just, is, is fun, right? So let's do the inner loop. The inner loop is code, build, let's call it local deploy. And then, uh, oh, running out of space again. We'll zoom in. Uh, test code. So there is our, uh, our inner loop. The so-called inner loop. It's not actually trademarked. So, and then you have, uh, you have deploy over here and then you go down to, uh, let's just call it run <laughs> and run has, uh, monitor debug RCA fix. And then that often, you know, that often goes back to here, but whatever. Uh, so, and then, and then I think this, is this part of the outer loop? Hard to say. This is probably outer loop, right? Let's say that's copyrighted. Outer loop. So, when it comes to shift left, and this is where like, it'd be fun to have like some animated visual that just like, is like, boop, 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 and then makes this animated thing and does this and then does that and then comes along for that. And then you're like, oh, these things. So what DevSecOps means in this term is that as you're going to this loop, you used to just do like security here. And now security gets to shift left and goes back and is applied here through various means. So that's another uh, exciting concept that you have for your DevSecOps. And then I think what you want to have with one of these things is a CTA, which is a call to action, which is called buy my stuff or download. If you don't like making money, that's, that's also an option. If you're more of a, you know, you're doing things in a, in a community based way, you have other goals and motivations. So here, uh, I bet we have, we have some Tanzu white paper, uh, that details more. And then we probably also have, uh, like a, uh, customer Rezo. We have the Tanzu build service and also just have a talk with us. talk with us. So then you've got that, right? So you need to have that. 
All right, so I think that's a good, let me put a date on this. 16 September, 2021. So I think that's a pretty good like little little thing to go over. So I can do kind of like a draft talk through of it. And then with my marketing buddies, you know, we're trying to put together these little 60 second things. And I think this is one related to what I have. I don't really know. We're gonna do this one. Uh, if not, I'll just uh, do it on my own, uh, which is fine. Now, of course, we're gonna need to add uh, some other stuff here. Oh, wait, we've already got that one. As, as much as it pains me, I'm gonna delete that one. But we don't have this one in already, do we? Mm -mm. Let's crop it. Now, unfortunately, you know, actually Creative Suite is great. I bet it's just kind of like auto background removal. It looks, you can tell on her head, it missed a few things there. But let's just go ahead and add this in anyways, so that you can enjoy that. Okay. So let's, let me run through. It's definitely not gonna be 60 seconds, but I'm gonna try to kind of like, this is gonna be a draft that I'm gonna share with my friends. You know who I'm talking to, Rita. And uh, we'll see if this, this works out for like a little, uh, a general idea for like a 60 second little video wing ding about uh, DevSecOps. So this could be a little weird, but again, it's, let's, let's see, here we go. Behind the scenes. Hey, wait, now we gotta put, we gotta put one of these guys in, right? Cause I think there was actually one that was like a camera, right? Ah, oh. there we go. There we go. All right. So what's the difference between DevOps and DevSecOps? It seems like a gratuitous thing to put something like security in there that probably, this put something like security in there that's been in there all along. Well, the origin, I think what it means is that there are now new technologies that make achieving the goals of security a lot easier and a lot better. That's a great way of putting it. Originally, one of, one of the main things that, de that made DevOps what it was, was new automation, new release and configuration management tools like Puppet and Chef and Salt and other ones that actually made it possible for operations people and developers to improve the way software was packaged and delivered so it could be delivered more frequently, weekly if not daily. Similarly, there's been a lot of new technologies that have come out that make of doing security in that software development process a lot better. For example, if you have container-based architectures, you're given the chance to actually rebuild containers, to rebuild packages a lot more rapidly. It's a lot more lightweight. So when you wanna add in patches or add in other things like that, it's a lot easier than updating previous ways of doing it, like physical or VM-based ways. Let's see if I got that there. Container-based, it's faster. Than, okay. So a lot of the platforms as a service, like the Tanzu application server, rely on container-based architectures. And when you have that approach to doing things, when you use something like the build packs, I think they're called something like the cloud native build packs, not only do you get to take advantage of those lightweight containers to more rapidly patch, uh, to more rapidly patch applications, but you also get the chance to prevent developers from even building containers and put controls in there to enforce the, the OSs, the frameworks, and even the types of uh, policy and controls you have on the container level. You as security and compliance people can specify what those look like rather than relying on developers to comply with them. So that's, that's pretty good. And this ultimately limits the mistakes and pilot policy and things being out of policy that security people need to do. Now, these are actual new technologies that didn't exist back when DevOps was, was uh, coined. I don't know if they didn't exist. These are new technologies that have, be that are becoming why that are becoming, these are new technologies that are now in use. Hmm. What are they? They're becoming widespread. These are new technologies that anyone can use that actually allow a different approach to doing security. And that's why I think it's valuable to put that security, that sec in the middle of DevOps to emphasize that just as with the original wave of DevOps, we're able to have new capabilities that allow us to do new things. Then that's new and better and blah, blah, blah. Let's see. That's going to end up being a lot more than 60 seconds, but I think, I think we can chop some stuff down there to kind of emphasize the, uh, the primary points. 
And see, this is like, as I'm going, let's see, we've got these. So I think what I would say is something like, uh, you know, if we've got, let's, let's use, let me draw a new version of this. Let me just erase this. Let's assume that this down here is like, you know, our, uh, our secure software supply chain, which is big old fancy word. And then I think for that section at the end, I would say like, uh, so now there are actually new technologies which give security people control earlier in the, the, the software building and operations process, which allow them to enforce controls and policy in places and ways they couldn't previously. And then, and then we would, you know, I think if we had an animation that was like a, uh, you know, Tanzu, uh, logoed version of this or whatever, like we would kind of have that illustration. Um, so if you're interested in that, you should definitely check out the white paper that we have, check out this blah, 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 white paper we have on this topic to dig into it more technically. There's a great overview from one of our customers, cool place that does good things going over that. And one of the tools that we used is called the Tanzu build service that helps you enforce these controls when you're building containers and do a lot of what I was talking about. And as always, if you're interested in talking more about it, just give us a call, get in touch with us. And we're happy to go over how we help people from the, uh, the, the, how we help people from the U.S. Department of Defense to all sorts of banks and other agencies out there that are really concerned about making sure they're securing their ability to do good software. And then, or something like that at the end. She says, uh, CTA yourself, y'all. Yep. So I think that's, you know, uh, that's a good start for it. Well, I think that's it for today's, but as always, if you want to find, I'll, I'll polish up the little behind the scenes for uh, DevSecOps and put that in our, our YouTube feed, which you can find if you go to tanzutalk.com slash videos, or you just click on the videos tab, you can see the playlist and you'll find the slightly edited, uh, more polished version of this. The, the DevSecOps thing. I don't think I'm going to put the legacy thing in there. That's just for people who uh, are watching the stream or, uh, you know, who watch the archive in the next two weeks on Twitch. If you care about that kind of thing. Uh, but I'll be back next week sometime 